Hey folks, today I've got your full in-depth review of the Garmin Bounce LTE Activity Trackers. Uh, now this is a pretty interesting watch because it has not only basic activity tracking like their Vivo Fit Junior series, but it also has LTE in it and even has GPS for workout tracking outdoors. Now I've got three daughters and the older two have been using these for a few months now, so I've got a pretty good idea where they work well and where they need a little bit of love. So for this video, I've divided up in a couple big chunks and you can see all the chapters along the bottom there. Uh, essentially we'll start off with the hardware just do a quick explainer of what's there. Then I'll talk about all the LTE or cellular features. Then from there, all the activity tracking and kind of like basic watch features. Finally, after that, all the sports features that use GPS. And then eventually I'll wrap this whole thing up and give you kind of some final thoughts. So with that, this is the hardware of the bounce. Uh, these are two identical units. It comes in three different colors, this purple color, a greenish color, or a black color. There is no optical heart rate sensor on the back of them. It does use a standard Garmin charging connector though. On the front, you have a 1.3 inch LCD touchscreen display. Uh, so on some of the different screens here, if I go to this one, for example, I can tap it and just like a touchscreen. I mean, it's pretty straightforward in that sense. Uh, and it works pretty well. Uh, and overall, it's a brilliant screen. I've got it on the lowest brightness setting for both of these right here, because it saves the most battery uh, and that's plenty bright. I don't see any reason whatsoever you would need it on the full brightness level but that is an option. As noted it has 24 by 7 activity tracking as well as sleep tracking and all that's both on the unit itself as well as on the companion app that I'll get into a little bit later on. The companion app that was mostly designed for adults uh, but you can have it on a child device and again I'll talk about that too. As noted it has LTE in it, it has Wi-Fi in it because it uses the Wi-Fi to save on the LTE side from a battery standpoint. Uh, it also has GPS in it for doing the GPS tracking. Uh, and it has a speaker and microphone in it for doing audio messages. The straps are removable, so if you look on the back and you just slide the thing there, you can kind of pop your uh, finger in there or like a screwdriver and pop that out. It's not something the kid can do easily, but you can do it if you need to, or if the strap somehow gets broken uh, and the straps are replaceable, they're simply just 20 millimeter straps. From battery life standpoint, it is two days, which is pretty bad for like a Garmin watch. It's actually the lowest, I think, of any Garmin watch out there. Um, however, that is kind of the norm for kid LTE activity trackers with this sort of display, which is kind of all of them. Uh, you can extend that to three or four days if the kids doesn't sleep with it at night from what I found. And of course, then there's the size. So before we get into the LTE features, we have to at least discuss the size. This is huge. Like this is, just to put it like comparison next to this Epix watch here, uh, it's pretty big on my wrist. Here's a couple of the watches laid out there on uh, Apple Watch SE, for example, SE second gen, uh, next to the Vivo Fit Junior 2 and 3, the 3 is the orange one with the watch band there, um, and next to a 40945 LTE. As you can see, it is a big watch, both like the side to side width, as well as the depth. Uh, it's essentially almost the same size as the Apple Watch Ultra. Now, that said, my kids didn't care at all. Neither did any other kid we put this on over the last two months. Not a single one said anything about the size. It was only the adults. Uh, no kids cared about the size in any way, shape, or form, so there you go. It is what it is. And then finally, the price is $149. So that gets right into the next piece, which is which countries it's available in. And that's largely driven by the LTE piece, uh, the cellular carrier portion. Uh, so you can see a list of countries right here or there on the screen right now. Keep in mind, that's as of this today, like January 5th or something. So uh, in that case, that's going to change over time. It has already changed in the last two months, adding more countries. So just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, now, from a cellular subscription standpoint, it's $9.99 a month, or you can pay $99 a year, which is $8.25 a month. That is per device though, so just keep that in mind if you have multiple kids. And of course, some people would say they prefer just to simply add it to their existing carrier plan for maybe a few bucks a month cheaper. And that is definitely the case. Garmin though has gone with the like, it just works factor. You don't deal with any of that. You just deal with Garmin directly uh, and they take care of it across the board. Sort of like Amazon or other devices that uh, have the cellular package built into it. Oh, hey, and a quick note before we get too deep into this. If you are finding this video helpful, if you could just whack that like button at the bottom there, it really does help out this video and the channel quite a bit. Now, there are a lot of features in this that depend on LTE. Uh, the very first one is location. So on my phone, the adult's phone, uh, you have the Garmin uh, Junior app. And basically that app has a lot of things in it, includes like the activity tracking piece, but it also includes a location piece and a tab called location. There on that location tab, I can see where the child is, or at least where the watch is, uh, at any point in time. In the background, this will update once per hour, as long as they stay within one of the geofence boundaries that you set up. Uh, but you can always refresh it to get an instant update of where it is. The kid can also manually update it as well. So for example, if I just tap this, I swipe down, there's this little check-in option right there. I just tap that, 
uh, and it'll go ahead and send my location automatically to the app. Uh, it takes usually just a couple seconds for that location to show up over here. Uh, you'll see my screen pop up. There you go, right there. Uh, now it's showed up as arrives. And it's as quick as that. It's very, very efficient. However, for most people, you're probably going to use what are called boundaries. Uh, boundaries are things that you set up in the app. So you put a location in there, uh, either an address or just move this little thing around the map. Uh, you can make this boundary as big or small as you want. Uh, it's a radius, so you can't quite make it a square, but that's fine. Uh, and you can set up multiple boundaries. So in my case, I set up one for school, one for home, one for uh, what they call in the Netherlands here, the BSO. Basically, they're after school care where they go to. Uh, and then I've set up some other fun ones just for the heck of it. Uh, and the way it works is the second the watch crosses that boundary line, I get notified on my phone, both going into the boundary, so it says it arrives there, as well as exiting the boundary. And it is scary, impressive, fast how quickly it works. Uh, so for example, the school has a bike path in front of it. And because it's a big circle radius, uh, basically like it cuts through that. So uh, if I just have have the kids in the bike and going past the school on the bike path, it'll trigger by the time I even like get to the other end of that little section of the bike path in front of the school. It is super, super cool and efficient. And that of course is pushed not just to me, but also to my wife or any other person that has the app installed that's been authorized for this. And we'll talk about all that in just a second as well. The last type of tracking there is, is live tracking. The idea behind that is you want to track uh, at second by second intervals for up to 30 minutes at a time. Uh, so that's something that the adult will trigger on uh, their phone. There's a live track option there. And then it basically goes into like the same adult live track mode that you would have for a big Garmin watch, uh, the exact same concept. So you can see the little dot moving, you can see where they've been, the trail. Uh, that's really ideal for again, up to 30 minutes of time, which is the max you can do on that live track session. And it's worthwhile noting that anything that happens on the watch that's of note, like to an adult, I get notified. So when it gets plugged into a charger, I get notified. When the battery's low, I get notified. If the battery dies and this turns off, I get notified. Uh, it crosses the boundaries, I get notified. Like it's kind of cool. I appreciate like the peace of mind as the parent to know that, hey, that battery's pretty low, I should charge it. Or hey, it's just simply off now because it ran out of battery versus thinking like the kid like fell into a canal or something bad like that. Next, there's audio messaging. So to show you how this works on the device itself, that's our location from earlier on. I'm gonna go back to the home screen right here. Uh, these are all customizable as I'll show you. Uh, I tap this up there and I've got this option right here, which is the messaging option. Uh, so there's contacts. Contacts can be defined in the app. Uh, so in my case, it is myself, my wife, uh, but also my other daughter who has her bounce watch there. Uh, and I can add any other bounce watch user uh, as well as any other caregiver or adult that has the app installed. So if the adult installs the Garmin Junior app, uh, they're given one of two levels, either caregiver or guardian. A uh, guardian basically means they have access to edit all the stuff. So that's really just like me and my wife uh, versus caregiver. It means they have basically still full access, but they cannot write anything or make any changes to it. They can go and send messages and see location updates, uh, but they can't like modify our family settings, if you will. And then there's a third tier, which is called friend. Uh, and those are people that you've created a connection with uh, and they have a bounce watch. The problem is there really should be like another tier in there where I can give them the ability to message. Uh, so just like friends have, friends can message back and forth, uh, but they don't need to have a bounce watch. As of today, friends need to have a bounce watch, which isn't super ideal. I would love to be able to give uh, the app to my uh, their grandparents, uh, which live an ocean away. So they don't really need like all the location updates and all that junk. Uh, they just want to be able to send messages back and forth. And that's really cool because as you can see here, so I go back into this, tap this open, tap little message that icon, uh, I go to contacts and I've got to their family. So I can send it to everyone in the family. I can send it to me as the dad, uh, little Al, which is this one over here, or mom right there. Uh, and if I choose the dad, for example, I have these options here, some messages from yesterday. Uh, I can write a text message. So if I want to text that out, uh, there are some presets right there. And you can see some of the different presets that are available there. Um, go back up the top. I can go ahead and send emoji messages. Uh, I can also send emojis with different sounds. These are kind of fun. Like here's a dog one. Uh, I can listen to it. There we go. I mean, the kids, like, they love this kind of stuff. Look, simple as that. Um, or I can go back here and I can send an actual uh, voice message. So if I tap this right there, I can then tap to record that. Uh, and I got 20 seconds to record that message. Uh, at the end of it, I just tap stop or just let it finish up and then click send. Uh, and then that gets sent to my phone here because I was the one that was receiving that message. Uh, now, you can see how quick that was. Already just got it right there. 
very, very efficient. Uh, now it's going to leverage either Wi-Fi or LTE, depending on the scenario. If you set up Wi-Fi at each one of the locations the kids are at, uh, it'll go ahead and save battery life in this because it'll use the Wi-Fi as opposed to LTE, which is more efficient from a battery standpoint. Now, just to show you the audio quality, uh, here's a message my daughter sent me back uh, like a month or so ago. Uh, she managed to like get herself locked in the garage and shed. We have like automated door locks or whatever. Not a big deal. I knew she was there, so I that's fine. This is recorded on the bounce and playing back on the bounce. I can play back her a message from the same watch, uh, just so you can listen to the audio quality. Daddy, I'm stuck in the garage. It locked up. Please, can you help me? I have to change my diamond, but I'm, well, I'm finished my diamond, but can you just help me? I'm stuck in here, and I'm really worried. Bye. Gotta go. See ya. As you can see, it is perfectly fine. Like, again, they're not like mastering a symphony recording here, but overall, I am totally happy with that. The kids have absolutely loved using these, like as little walkie talkies back and forth. Uh, they've been like on separate bikes, cruising along the bike paths of Amsterdam, uh, sending messages back and forth to them. They, they think this is like the greatest thing on earth. Finally, back in that check-in area there, if I go back into kind of the messages, uh, I just want to mention this there. Uh, there is the check-in like we saw earlier on. So you got to go ahead and just check in your location. Uh, there's the contacts that we saw earlier on, but there's also get help. Uh, if they choose this, they have a 10 second countdown and then it's going to go ahead and notify the people on the app there. I can cancel this at any point in time, uh, click confirm to cancel that. Uh, and basically that just sends them an emergency message and it sends a location and it essentially starts a live track. So at that point, uh, they are tracked as a live track uh, until that session is ended. So again, something's going wrong. This will let you know as a parent exactly where they are uh, and that it's an emergency situation. Okay, so let's talk about some of the general features of the watch. Uh, this is the watch face itself. These are customizable. Uh, this is not the default one. Here's a picture of the default one right now. Uh, this is the unicorn one because my daughter's six and wants unicorns. Uh, on the other one here, I've set it as a photo. So there are about 15 different uh, default watch faces you can choose from, and you can also make your own with any photo that you want. Uh, if I swipe to the left here, you can swipe through this. I'll see the weather right there. Uh, I can go down here and look at the weather the next few days. I can swipe again. Uh, these are sort of my active stats. Uh, these are kind of like top PRs, if you will. Uh, so you see the most busy days she's had recently was 16,000 steps on December 15th. I can swipe again. This is the leaderboard within our family. Uh, so you can see Elephant is her watch. Uh, my other daughter's watch is called Little Owl. I can go down, I can see my steps here uh, as 1116, so a little bit delayed. Uh, my wife's steps aren't showing up yet because her watch hasn't synced yet for whatever reason today. Anyways, swiping again, there's chores. This is something that we as a family haven't really used much on the watch. Uh, we've used, you know, the Vivo Fit Juniors for years, but chores are something that kids just do. They don't really get credit for these at this age. Uh, up at some point they will, but you can set up chores in this and then the kids will go ahead and get coins. Those coins can be redeemed in the app. Uh, they can also be tracked here as things to do each day. And they can check them off as complete, or you can have the adult set them to be checked off as complete. Uh, either way, those all show up there. Here's the steps for the day, 1600. Uh, here's the active minutes for the day. Uh, and then here are the messages. You can see the message that was sent to me uh, from the family with the dog barking, uh, and then back to the watch face. Uh, I can go ahead and tap on this upper right hand button right here. And this is again, uh, the top left hand side is the connect option. Uh, this is for activities. Uh, basically to go ahead and start an activity or a game. We'll go to games in just a second. Uh, down here are watch face uh, alarms, timer, stopwatch, pretty straightforward watch stuff. And then here are all the settings. Um, I can also swipe down from the top at any point in time. And there's even a flashlight right there. Uh, so you can see this there. I can use that as a flashlight at night or the kid can use a flashlight at night. They can lock the screen. There's a do not disturb mode uh, and also talk about the school mode in just a second as well. Uh, before we talk about school, let's talk about the most important thing here, which is the games. Uh, so in the games there, there's a math flashcard uh, type game. So again, different levels here. You basically just go ahead and add up different uh, numbers or subtract numbers, etc. There we go. And then you just go through. Our kids have enjoyed that. Uh, there's also a puzzle slider one here. Uh, so we'll go obviously the shark, uh, click go. Um, I am not good at these at all. Like I cannot make these work, uh, but you can just slide the pieces around uh, and do this for as long as it takes. So those are the two games in there. Uh, there's also though, what's called the toe to toe challenge at the bottom here. Uh, with the way this works is it'll go ahead and it'll challenge other people with Garmin, Vivo Fit Junior or Bounce devices to a two minute step challenge. Uh, so the idea being that you have two minutes to get as many steps as you can. You can run around in circles. There's even the Connect IQ app for the adult Garmin watches, like virtually every Garmin watch, uh, so that you can compete against your kids and getting as many steps as you want. Uh, from a game standpoint, that's all there is, and I'm kind of happy about that, to be honest. But of course, at this point, you're like, 
how do I keep my kids from playing with this watch all day long at school? And for that, there is school mode. And school mode has two different levels. Uh, the first level is basically just shutting off all the audio notifications. Uh, but the second level is restricting the watch so that you can't do anything with it except to swipe to see your steps. That's literally it. Uh, every other function is disabled. And the way you set up school mode is in the app. You choose which days you want and the times that you want. So for example, from uh, 8.20 in the morning till 6 p.m. or whatever the case may be from Monday through Friday. And that works fine, but it's just not like super flexible. Uh, number one, it'd be way cooler if it was just simply tied to the boundary. So for example, if the kid entered the school, then it went to school mode. And if the kid left the school, then it exited school mode. Otherwise, like this week, the kids are on school vacation. Uh, so I've got to like disable that and all that kind of fun stuff. It's sort of a pain in the butt. The other issue is that at night, the kids play with it quite a bit. Uh, and my kids are a bit younger. So if you have older kids, it may not be so much of an issue. But I wish I could set that same restrictive level uh, for at nighttime too. And you can't. You've only set up one uh, school mode time per day. Uh, there is a do not disturb mode, but that's just about like silencing notifications and stuff. It has nothing to do with keeping them from dorking with the watch. Now, a couple quick things about the app on the phone. Uh, the app is really targeted at being on the adult's phone. Uh, but there is a kid mode if you want to install on a kid's device. If you have an older kid maybe uh, that has their own device, uh, you can do that and you can set which options a kid can leverage. Uh, and the whole reason for that is the kids gain points uh, based on how many active minutes they have throughout the day. So once they reach those 60 active minutes per day, which is mostly just like walking around and stuff, uh, they get these points and they can redeem these points in this game. Uh, again, despite having these watches for like three years or so, uh, the game part isn't something our family has done a whole lot with. Uh, I just haven't really wanted to encourage them to do games. So one of our daughters has like 300 plus points saved up. We play this game like once every three or four months, but some people play it every single night. It's sort of a way to reward the kid uh, for going ahead and doing either the chores or all the steps, etc. Also in the app is the ability to see all of those uh, activity metrics and their sleep metrics. You can see it by day, by week, by month, by year. Uh, it's pretty cool to see it over a longer period of time. You can also see all the sleep metrics that are shown as well. Uh, and I find it pretty darn accurate as far as it's just using accelerometer inside the watch. Uh, but overall, it's pretty accurate in what it says. Now, as far as battery life goes, as mentioned earlier on, it's two days of battery life. Uh, if the kids take it off at night, then I get like three to four days uh, battery life. It takes between two and three hours to charge, which is a really long time. I really wish it would take like 45 minutes. That'd be perfect to do either over like breakfast or dinner, uh, where they're not, you know, losing out on steps or things like that. Uh, the good news though is it is the exact same Garmin charging port as virtually every other Garmin watch. So if you're already a Garmin family, then you have probably lots of charging cables sitting around. Now, next up, we have the sports features. Uh, so tap this button up there and then tap a little sports icon and then tap activities. Uh, and you can see walk, run, bike, pool, swim, or other. Uh, if I choose run, then here's a time alert that I had set up. I'll show you that in just a second. And then I can choose outside or inside. Uh, if it's an outside run, then it'll use GPS in the watch itself. Uh, and I can choose the settings down at the bottom right there. Uh, so tap that again. I can show the pace. I can create alerts. There's that time alert that I had enabled. I can choose based on a certain custom time or just these preset ones. Uh, there's a distance alert. I can go down. I can do a run walk alert. And I can do auto lap as well based on certain distances. This is obviously in miles, but you can change it to kilometers. Same is true as well for the time, how you want to display that. That's all customizable uh, using the Adelta app there. Once I were to go ahead and start this, it would show me my uh, total distance and my average pace as well as my time uh, for this and the entire workout. It's pretty straightforward. You don't have anywhere near the data fields you'd have on an adult Garmin watch, but for kids, this is more than sufficient enough. At the end of the workout, uh, you can go on to the Garmin Junior app. Uh, and you can see kind of an abbreviated version of that. So you can see the track on a map. Uh, you can see your average, your split, uh, your pace, etc., your elevation. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty basic. Uh, it will not automatically sync to any platforms like Strava, etc. It's all, uh, there's no connectivity option there at all. Uh, the good news though is that you can plug the watch into a computer and then pull that fit file off. It's the exact same fit files as the adult watches. So if the kid does like have their own Strava account or whatever, you could at least manually upload to that uh, if you wanted to. It's also handy for people like me who want to check the accuracy of the GPS. Uh, so in this first test here, my wife went out with the bounce watch on one wrist and her Phoenix 7 Solar Sapphire in multi-band configuration on the other wrist. Uh, and as you can see, it's pretty darn close. I mean, clearly the nearly $1,000 watch is beating the $150 watch, uh, but it's not that far off. It's usually just a few meters off in most places. The same was true when I went out with my daughter for a run. Uh, I had on the $2,000 Mark Garmin Athlete Gen 2 edition, uh, and she had, again, the $150 bounce. Uh, and the tracks are very, very close. I mean, this is really zoomed in here, uh, and at most they're like two to three meters off in a couple of the churns. So 
for a kid's activity tracker. Uh, frankly, this has beat some of the GPS watches that I've been testing over the past few months here that cost quite a bit more, that have multi-band configuration. So I don't really have any complaints on GPS accuracy. Uh, and again, there is no heart rate connectivity or heart rate uh, anything on this watch. You can't pair it to a strap and there is no uh, sensors on the back. So where do we stand overall? Well, I think for 150 bucks, this is one of the better Garmin deals out there. Uh, certainly there are kids activity trackers, LTE activity trackers that cost less, uh, but you're ultimately paying for that Garmin refinement. You're paying for what is like almost a decade of VivoFit Junior uh, activity trackers and the entire app and that whole ecosystem and how clean and well it works. You're paying for that. Uh, you're of course also paying for the LTE V subscription. And I think a lot of the features that Garmin has created around this are super well done for being a first iteration of it. Uh, stuff like the boundaries, for example, uh, the alerting, all that again works really, really well. There are some tweaks I like to see, of course, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, the ability to add like another layer of someone that they can message back and forth, uh, but doesn't have to have a watch, it'd be nice. Uh, and it's, again, you can do that today if you want to, you just have to kind of over permission, which isn't super ideal. Uh, the other things I'd love to see that just simply charge faster. Uh, the two day battery life, I guess, that's just sort of the reality of this category. Uh, but the charging speed is something that is absolutely within Garmin's control from a component standpoint. Uh, and that's something that I wish was a lot faster here. And lastly, as far as size, again, I think it's hideously large, but our kids didn't mind at all. They absolutely love these watches. Uh, and other friends, kids that have seen them also love them. Uh, people, our friends are buying them, our real life friends are buying them now. Uh, these are great if you need it. Only I didn't really mention age ranges here. Garmin says these are targeted at six to 12 years old. Uh, so the VivoFit Junior series go down a bit younger than that, uh, and that works fairly well. Uh, I would generally agree with that six to 12. So our six year old, no problems using the vast majority of these features. She can kind of navigate around with it, no problems. She can send messages back and forth. Our five-year-old can also send messages back and forth. She just turned five like the same week she got this. So she was kind of like on the edge of four and five. And I think for her from like maturity standpoint, she can use the features just fine, but having this much power on her wrist seems to be a bit of a distraction. Uh, at the same time, my older daughter, when she was five, probably wouldn't have been that distraction. So it just depends on your kid. I think uh, if your kid's more mature, then you can have them probably at that five years old range. But again, it's gonna depend on your particular kid. Uh, overall, these are cool watches. I'm not sure like if I need them in our family though, to be honest, like sometimes they just become a bit of a distraction uh, versus their VivoFit Junior watches are just straightforward, just measuring steps and keeping like activity tracking. And that's what they kind of need. So I could see a scenario where I might use these for trips, for example, uh, but not necessarily as their day-to-day -day watch because right now, I just sometimes don't want that distraction in the house. But again, I think if your kids were older, like seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, then that might be less of a distraction for them and might work out better for you. Uh, anyways, hopefully you found this interesting and useful. If so, go ahead and whack that like button at the bottom there or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. Have a good one.